Masak Tabrofi and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone joining this conference. As mentioned, my name is Dr. Jason Batch, and on behalf of the study team, I'll be giving the, the presentation, the fast and the continuous DTG-based antiretroviral therapy achieves impressive viral load suppression in children and adolescents in the short and long term. Um, and I, so I have no in conflicts of interest to declare. And as a quick background for this study, as dolutegravir-based ART is becoming the preferred first line for children and adolescents, there are questions about the, the real-world clinical impact of this strategy and this rollout. So essentially, we've wanted to look at our large cohort across six countries in East and Southern Africa to see what we're, we're seeing with viral load suppression and the characteristics of children and adolescents using DTG. For methodology, the, it was a retrospective review using data extracted from our electronic medical records. It covered seven HIV, pediatric HIV clinics across the six countries seen in the map on the right. It was a six-year period covered between 2016 through 2021. And for the purpose of this study, we defined HIV viral load suppression as less than 1,000 copies. And then we did a cross-sectional observation at six-month intervals, trying to look at the trends of viral load suppression at roughly six-month intervals. And we used that first post-DTG six-month as our comparator for our analysis. Here's a quick snapshot of the clinical characteristics of our cohort. We had 11,799 children and adolescents receiving DTG in our cohort. With this series of pie charts, you can see the type of um, ART used, including about 20% were new ART initiations. The bottom left, you can see the type of formulation with TLD being the most commonly used. You can also see the country breakdown, sex, and age breakdown on the right. Our total analysis had about just over 21,000 person years of follow-up with the mean follow-up time on DTG of just about two years. Um, our analysis also included just over 22,000 documented viral load results, ranging from six months to up to 60 months post-DTG. As for the initial six-month post-DTG viral load suppression rate for the entire cohort was right at 92%. And when we looked at just the ART naive who were being initiated, it was 93.1%, showing good early suppression. Um, at the bottom, we also show we had quite good clinical outcomes and follow-up of this cohort with just about 94% remaining in care and about 5% who were successfully and safely transferred out with only 1.6% having poor outcomes of loss to follow-up or death. This graph shows the trend of our viral load suppression rates over time. Um, I think it's important to notice the first four to five data points. Those first two years, we had a lot more viral loads, and then beyond two years, our numerator and denominator and confidence intervals got smaller and much wider. But even looking at that early 20, up to 24 to 36, we saw good maintenance of viral load suppression without any significant loss. We then looked at just the female cohort and likewise saw good sustain, no major dips, no big drop-offs of viral load suppression. And again, at the later months, our cohort did get smaller and smaller, so wider confidence intervals. Likewise, with our male cohort, we also had good sustained viral load suppression earlier and later months. We then also looked at the group by age group. The under 10, there's a lot of variability because it was a smaller cohort, but amongst the green and the purple, the 10 to 15, the 15 to 19, it was again sustained with some fluctuations, but no major drops and losses of suppression. And then lastly, we also looked at desegregated data by country. Um, you can see there was a bit of heterogeneity and a bit of variation across the sites, but within each site, there was not any major loss. The viral load suppression rates remained high across all sites above 85% um, and remained sustained. Apologies for these slides jumping around. 
Um, and in this somewhat busier table, we then just plotted the changes of the viral load suppression rate compared to that six month um, comparator rate. And each row was one of those cohorts. So overall, there were really no major statistically significant changes in viral load suppression other than the two boxes in the red, which were amongst the 10 to 15 year olds. But again, smaller changes. And when we looked a little bit closer at this time, we did realize across most of our sites that two to two and a half year follow-up was during some of the peak COVID-19 pandemic time. And we know there was a lot of disruptions, challenges with supply chain, access and travel that could have been influencing that. Um, as a quick snapshot, I know there's a lot of interest about single drug substitution and if changing just dolutegravir while not changing the NRTI backbone is defective. So a quick snapshot of our cohort, we had about just over 3,700 patients who underwent a single drug substitution. And here's a quick table that showed amongst the entire cohort and then looking at whether their core NRTI was abacavir, zidovudine, or tenofovir. The viral load suppression rate actually remained pretty stable with no huge drops or loss of viral suppression rate. And amongst, you know, sorry, here's the same with um, the changes in viral load suppression rate and only a little bit at the six month, a, t a small drop, but then at later terms, it was pretty well maintained in this single drug substitution cohort. Um, we also looked at those who were previously unsuppressed. And while a much smaller cohort of only 210, we did find across the sub cohorts, upwards of 80% of those who had been unable to be suppressed despite other regimens and a slew of interventions, we were able to suppress upwards of 80% of those by just using dolutegravir. So in summary, in this analysis of our cohort, um, we were pleased with the results that we saw and that DTG was effective to rapidly achieve and consistently maintain viral load suppression in the short and medium term of our patients. Um, we do realize that our female and young adolescents, of course, are still key populations who need additional focused efforts. We need to dig a little deeper into that two to three year period to see if it was more than just the COVID pandemic or if there are other factors at play. And of course, we want to take a much deeper look at that single drug substitution to see if it is a viable option, especially amongst those who are unsuppressed. Um, we want to do a lot more deeper analysis into this, um, looking for other drivers of high and low viral load suppression rates, looking at other psychosocial and adherence factors, you know, MMD and other differentiated service models were also being rolled out at the same time, which could have also positively influenced the, the good findings we saw. And we're hoping to get more and more data on genotyping, specifically with INSTI genotypes, which is currently unavailable as routine care at our sites. But in summary, we are very optimistic with these results. We hope they add to the growing evidence base so that clinicians globally more confidently and courageously are using dolutegravir in children, especially with the 10 milligram formulations rolling out currently. Um, we have a complimentary companion poster where we specifically looked at protease inhibitors, the DTG. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. And this is contact information if any further questions about this study and the data set involved. Thank you so much.